evening and welcome to Difference of Opinion. To give us their bright ideas for what the next federal government should do with your hard-earned tax dollars, Stephen Main is a Walkley Award-winning financial journalist, former advisor to the Kennett government and best known as founder of the popular website Crikey.com. <laughs> Stephen. Well, Jeff, I reject the premise of the question. Uh, we shouldn't be spending it at all. We are traditionally a debt-addicted nation. Uh, we consume far too much. Our federal government isn't worth anything. In other words, our assets are still less than... Uh, our, our liabilities are still more than our assets at a federal level. So our surplus shouldn't be $20 billion, It should be 30 to $40 billion, given the context of this unprecedented boom. We should be banking the boom. Can you give up some of those billions to make that investment in a global warming strategy? Well, I think uh, tax the poison. Carbon is a poison. Tax it. Forget about schemes. Treasury wants to tax the poison. That's what we should do. And if you are going to spend uh, on certain areas, our federal government is the only federal government in the world that doesn't spend a dollar on public transport. So I think that if you really have got $20 billion and you accept climate change as an issue, the feds should start writing out some cheques to assist the states on public transport because every other government in the world at a federal level does exactly that. Stephen, if we are going to come up with the, the, the clever force to deal with the challenges of global warming, aren't we going to have to improve higher education? Aren't we going to have to put money in to overcome the skill shortages of teachers, of doctors, of the sciences that we're short of at the moment? Look, I agree. The Howard government has been characterised by spending like a drunken sailor. I mean, uh, they are a tax and spend government. They've increased spending by $100 billion over their 11 years in office, from $131 to $231 billion. But the one area where they haven't really gone berserk is education. I think they've gone crazy in health, 20 billion to 50 billion, too much. We're spending too much on that, too much on military. But education, we are down the league ladder with the OECD. We're only spending 0.8% of GDP on universities. We have had to triple our foreign students to 160,000 for the universities to get by. So I don't want to spend anything. If, if you've got to spend something, I think education is probably the highest priority. We, we also shouldn't have tax cuts because it will cause inflation and push up interest rates. We have had oh, substantial tax oh. cuts since 2000. Substantial. In this country, if you earn 50000 and you've got a couple of kids, you pay no tax because the government gives you more in family tax benefits than you pay in tax. That's an amazingly generous system. No tax at 50 grand. So we don't need to give any more tax cuts out. There's been substantial cuts, even though Kevin Rudd might know the, know the formulas. The top <laughs> tax rate used to kick in at 50 grand. Now it's 150 grand after five years. No more tax cuts because you'll all be paying more interest on your mortgages. And Stephen, you... if we follow your recipe, though, and we don't give it back in taxes and we don't go to the priorities of global warming and infrastructure, and you invest it, how do you address these social concerns that everyone is raising, the needs? Well, I, I don't think there are substantial social concerns. Oh, Australia oh, is absolutely oh, prosperous. Oh, we are... I mean, I, I would say... I, I, I would, OK, I would say, if I had a dream, I'd say, we're, we're rich enough, we don't need to be killing old-growth forests. And I'd say, I'd say we definitely need to fund decent broadband. But I'd make a really important point to you that back in 1998, South Korea went broke. They went broke. They, they ran out of money. So and we lent, of Asia we lent them a they billion dollars. Exchange, they had fixed exchange yeah, rates. We lent them a billion dollars. Peter Costello says the worst day in the job as Treasurer was on Christmas Day in 98 when he had to go into the office. The South Koreans have run out of money. We lent them a billion. Today, the South Koreans have 250 billion US in foreign reserves. They have absolutely saved like there's no tomorrow. And what have we got? 30 billion. So we've had this amazing boom. All of our competitors have built up these massive funds. The Russians have got 450 billion. The Singapore government owns more assets in Australia than the Australian government. The Singapore government's okay. got 30 billion dollars of assets, more than our own government. So we should be saving and building up our own assets, not just deluging. Can more you tax explain cuts. to Australia then what are you saving for? What is it tomorrow? Is it the end of the commodities boom? Is it a downturn in the global it's economy? For, it's for the next generation. You will not get a boom oh, like no. this. Company tax receipts will go from 35 billion to 70 billion over a nine-year period. They will double. We are absolutely booming. And we owe it to our children and their children to bank a bit of that. Is it in fact a good thing to have this accumulated huge surplus? Is it really an indication of good economic management or not, Stephen May? Well, I mean, as I say, the numbers are slightly overstated because our federal government isn't worth anything. 
And if you throw in the states as well, the states are, are borrowing an average of $12 billion a year, um, government as a whole in Australia is not actually saving anything at the moment. And I think this does get back to, to John Hewson's earlier comment about the crazy federal state system, is that we have a federal government that's arguably the smallest in the world. They don't do much compared to other governments. And we have state governments that are huge. They deliver the majority of the services, yet they've got none of the revenue. And that's why they're all spiralling into debt uh, right now. So uh, I think that uh, you know, it is not correct to say that government as a whole in Australia is saving a heap. And I think the feds should actually bail out the states and should be throwing money at the states because the states need it to deliver these key services. Can credit card it? balance, average credit card debt in Australia since 96, up from 1,000 to 3,000. Mortgage payments, mortgages, huge, mortgages huge, up 300% to 820 billion. We now owe 820 billion in mortgages. Foreign debt's up from 180 billion to almost 600 billion. So we've all borrowed all from offshore yeah. through the banks and remortgaged our houses. And as a nation, we are hocked. And I'm saying the government, the government should be leading the charge on savings and imploring the community to stop buying the latest plasma and actually save for the future. Stephen, do we need to make a radical injection of some of that surplus into building a bigger nation, a better nation? Well, I think we do. I think that uh, congestion's, congestion in the cities, I think it does need to be some substantial infrastructure in the cities. In the ports? Uh, in the ports. I think if you get onto coal ships, then you get into global warming. I think I'd rather <laughs> you talk about something else. But yes, it, we don't want to move that coal. Improving, we want to leave it improving stuck the there. ports. <laughs> improving the ports. And uh, I think broadband. Broadband is the classic mm. public interest infrastructure project e health. E uh, education over the internet, they're the sorts of long-term things that, uh, that you know, are good for the nation. For instance, we don't have a national highway, dual highways. You know, mm. that as a nation, we still haven't fixed up you know, the Hume from uh, Albury to Sydney, still not uh, dual carriageway. And your question about transport, uh, Jeff, very important to have an integrated national approach to the different modes of transport, rail and, and roads and public transport. And there is no national integrated approach across the modes. And that's a classic example of a, a new federal government should come in and say, here's 20 billion, let's get a big team together and let's take the long term view. And it doesn't have to be expensive to tackle glo uh, global um, warming. I would love a $40 a tonne uh, carbon tax. That would raise billions of dollars and then you use that to fund projects. So it doesn't have to be expensive if you tax the poison. And that goes to the absolute heart of how you deal with it.